Mark here. Today I wanted to talk to the role playing community, specifically the younger and newer players, um, about such things as power gaming and cheating and the route that I feel you really should go when you're going to sit down and become a role player. Now, a lot of people will tell you that the story is the important thing and that the rules should not get in the way of the story. This is correct. However, all things have their limits. The rules are in place for a reason and it is okay to break them when it comes to furthering the goal of the story. It is not okay to break them when your sole intention is to beat the dungeon master. You know, um, basically, there were always, you know, you can read many of the books, no one wins at role playing, and that's true, but there are players that will do anything in their power to, to survive, to not lose a character, and or to be the biggest badass in a party. Uh, you have people that uh, will cheat at dice. I personally knew a guy who claimed during a session of a wrestling match in the WWF role-playing game to have gotten around 10 criticals in a row. He would roll his dice and then snatch them up immediately and say that he critted. This is not only cheating, this is bad and blatant cheating that is easily detectable. Um, there are much more subtle people, you know, that uh, may flub a little number here or there and maybe they've got a, a decent enough reputation that it is uh, not, you know, you don't scrutinize their every dice roll and maybe they do that. And I'm telling you there's no point to it. Characters are easily replaced. There's no reason to lie and cheat. You've got a man or a woman, your dungeon master, who has taken the time to craft a story, set aside however many hours of their life to craft a story for you. The least you can do is respect that and play the game the way they intend it to be played. I can't stress that enough. You're only disrespecting this person that is trying their best to provide you entertainment by cheating. You've got character sheet cheaters. People who will fudge a little, erase something on their character, add a few more experience points, add another point of strength. Ah, the DM will never notice. And it's the same thing. And you've got people who will look through the books for any combination they can find to make their character unstoppable. Again, that doesn't necessarily fit the character, but they want it. People in Vampire the Masquerade, every character that has Dominate, has a Discipline, has got to have Enchanting Voice the Merit to make it easier. Never mind the fact that, you know, you don't really have anything in your mind about the character's voice being special. No, but you want that easier difficulty. This is the kind of thing that needs to be just cut out, guys. Make your character into uh, a, a, a role that is interesting, that is, uh, that is going to be fun for the dungeon master as well as yourself. And I'm telling you, if you make a character that's interesting, nine times out of ten, the dungeon master is not going to go putting you into situations that are unbalanced against you. A good dungeon master will balance things. It's the same in D&D. &D. If you don't roll all 18s, you know, or even if you roll like the bare minimum of acceptable stats, don't whine and cry and huff and puff. Try to play the character. You know, a dungeon master is going to tailor, if he's good, he's going to tailor the dungeon to your character and not expect your below average character to pull off things that super standard monsters will have. You know, uh, the player's handbook from 3rd edition on had uh, ways to determine if your character was acceptable. And I thought, well great, now that that's out, no one's ever going to whine and cry about their stats again. Wrong. It happens all the time. And I really wish it would go away. Anyway, so those are some notes about things that I would like to see the, the players try to phase out of their game. Because they only hurt you. They only, you know, 
I find the greatest joy in role playing to me, if I'm a player, is to take a, a lowly first level character or neonate vampire or what have you, and through nothing but the way the game is meant to be played, raise him as something great. If you cheat to do it, or another problem is dungeon masters who shovel too much stuff onto you. The dungeon masters that at first level are like, well, why don't you go ahead and take 50 more freebies, uh, this or that or the other thing, or why don't you start a D&D character at fifth level? Don't do that. Don't don't take away the childhood of a brand new character. Those are the formative times and the most interesting times I find. Um, you know, uh, power, and, and another thing that I want to uh, just rant about is is stories. D and D, for example, and all these other games are fantastical, wild games that that have all sorts of things possible in the stories. But some people, DMs or and or players, tell these tales that are so beyond the scope of even what's you know normal for those games that. It leaves anybody else scratching their head. Uh, I, you know, things like uh, I, I had a guy tell me that in this game he died, and rather than like a simple resurrection or raised dead, the DM worked out something where uh, he was reincarnated into the female cleric's womb, and she gave birth to him, and then they cast a spell to rapidly age him back up to where he was so on and so forth. Why would you need to mess with all this bizarre weirdness, especially when some, you know, simple things like Raise Dead are in the game? You know, or uh, I knew a, a, a storyteller in White Wolf that allowed a brand new neonate to, uh, to kill a Justicar. Uh, things like this, while perfectly acceptable, acceptable, you can do what you want in your own game. They're going to make anybody that is uh, that knows the game just look at you and go, you know, I wouldn't want to play in that campaign. I wouldn't want to play with that guy. Try to play a game the way it is intended to be played. It's why they made the game how they made it. It's why you bought it, I would think. If you're going to totally twist the game into something else entirely, why did you even buy it? Uh... Also, uh, out of character knowledge, you know, for number one, DMs can help prevent that by not telling characters things they shouldn't know. But number two, you know, if you've played a certain game enough times that you know something, you know what a monster is, you know, uh, your brand new character uh, immediately going off of the same knowledge that all your other characters have learned over the years, that's it should tr you should definitely try to cut down on that. You know, just because you know that, uh, oh, the homeless guy that uh, is talking to the rat is probably a bone gnar. Your neonate Nosferatu probably doesn't know that and has no reason to start looking for a silver bullet in the event a fight breaks out. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, I've kind of went all over the place on this, but I just wanted to talk a little bit. Just try to say to the new crop of players and DMs, hey, look at your game, you know, see how it's supposed to go, make it your own, but at the same time you're forging, uh, you're forging your own path, but, you know, forge it to the right destination, you know, uh, don't, uh, you know, sculpt sculpt the game, don't hit it with a fucking sledgehammer. <laughs> okay? That, that, that's, that's my bequest to you. Alright? And I guess at the end of this, I just wanted to send a few shout-outs. Just wanted to say, uh, Scott, thanks for watching. Andrew, thanks for watching. Uh, and a huge shout-out to Mutus, who is the best storyteller slash dungeon master I have ever or probably will ever play under. I hope you're all having a wonderful time and I'm here with uh, advice, questions, comments to any role player and also uh, a shout out to the Juggalo Nation. 
all the ICP fans that watched my last video and have subscribed and have been just absolutely wonderful uh, clown love to you all and I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and I will see you all next time.